In this video I'm going to be explaining the process for changing the timing chain and the timing chain guides on the M117 engine. This particular engine is in a Mercedes C126 560 SEC from 1989 but the same process will apply to any of the other M117 engines which were fitted in a, a variety of different Mercedes over the years. The first thing we need to do when working on the car is to disconnect the battery. Then after disconnecting the battery remove the airbox cover remove the filter from the airbox and then remove the airbox. On this car I'm also going to be changing the expansion tank which as you can see from the photo is very discoloured so at this point I also drain the coolant. Then we need to remove various parts from the front of the engine so that we can get to the guide pins which need to be removed to change the guides. So remove the alternator and alternator bracket, the power steering pump and power steering bracket, also the radiator fan and the shroud along with the radiator top hose. Then to remove the covers, there's also two fuel hoses which run over the cover which is furthest away in this photo. Also label and remove the plug leads and remove the distributor cap. There's no lip at the bottom of the cylinder head to stop oil running over the exhaust manifolds so it's not a bad idea to put some paper towel over the exhaust manifolds before the timing covers are removed. Then you can go ahead and remove the timing covers. With these parts removed your engine base should be looking something like this. You'll notice I've also tie wrapped a bag around the air intake on top of the air distributor just to stop anything falling down there. We can now see the guides. These are the brown items in the photo here. They should be a nice light colour but they do get discoloured with time and they go brittle. The problem with the guides is that they snap and when they do snap parts can drop into the bottom of the engine and they can lock the engine up resulting in a very large bill. This is the main list of parts required for this job. Firstly the chain itself which comes with a master link for linking the two ends together. We need a second link because we're going to have to link the old chain to the new chain then after rolling in the new chain we're going to have to replace the link to link the two ends of the new chain together. We'll also be fitting a new chain tensioner and a gasket to go with the tensioner. Then there are the four guides themselves, two for each side of the engine. Whilst the top of the engine is open, I'm also going to change the camshaft oilers. They can go brittle and break, and that means you lose oil to the camshaft, which can give excessive wear and cause engine problems. I'll also be replacing the cover gaskets on the left hand and right hand side, and as mentioned, I'm also going to be changing the expansion tank. Before we start on changing the guides, I'm going to set the engine to top dead centre and check the timing. Remove the spark plugs before doing this, it'll get rid of the compression on the engine, make it much easier to turn. Then, from the big bolt on the front of the engine on the crankshaft, rotate the engine clockwise, getting it towards top dead centre. When it gets to top dead centre, you should be able to check the timing marks on both camshafts. Here the timing mark is shown on one camshaft, and here on the other camshaft you can see the marks towards the right hand side of the photograph. When these are lining up, you know the engine's in top dead centre on cylinder 1. Also notice the cam lobe on here is in very good condition. This engine's on 96,000 miles, but has clearly been well looked after. The timing marks line up very well with the references on the camshaft. This shows there's very little stretch on this chain. This can be further checked by trying to pull the chain away from the sprockets. Given that there's very little wear on this chain, there's a good chance the sprockets are going to be in good condition. If the chains do wear and stretch, it can cause wear on the sprockets, which would mean they would also have to be changed. Mark the distributor location and remove the distributor. To make it easy to get the guides out, I'm going to remove the chain tensioner. Then we need to pull out the guide pins. This is done using a puller, which can be bought or made relatively simply. When the guides are removed, new ones are fitted. Use some thread sealant on the pins when they go in to avoid any oil leaks on there. I push them in place using a 7mm socket and a hammer to drive them into place. It used to be possible just to buy the plastic part for this guide, but they're no longer available, so you now have to buy the entire arm. This is the arm which goes onto the tensioner. There's a definite change in manufacturing technique between the old one and the new one. I prefer the style of the old one, it looks like a much nicer finish, but I'm sure the new one will do the job. This photo shows the two guides back in place. And here are the two guides on the other side. I then rotated the engine a couple more times getting it back to the original position to recheck the timing to make sure that there have been no problems whilst the guides have been removed. 
Then the chain is clamped to the sprocket using tie wraps. This is so that we can remove the link to fit the new chain. All of the exposed engine parts are covered up. In this place I use some bubble wrap and an old sheet. Then make sure there's a tie wrap either side of where the link is going to be cut, at which point we then need to cut the link. I did this using an angle grinder. Then once the edges have been ground off, the pins can be pushed out. Inspect the new chain to make sure that it's all in good condition and there are no problems with it. Then attach the new chain to the old chain using the master link. When fitted, carefully inspect the circlips to make sure that they're fitted into the grooves. At this point the covers can be removed and we can start rolling in the chain. I fitted a piece of cardboard over the engine just to stop anything falling down there. And here you can see the procedure using tie wraps. There were at least three tie wraps on the chains at all times. So in this case we would remove the tie wrap on the right hand side, rotate the engine slightly, then fit a new tie wrap on the left so that we're feeding the new chain in and taking the old chain out, making sure there are tie wraps on both sides of the join. When you get round to the end we're ready to remove the master link and fit the new master link. This will join the two ends of the new chain together. I covered the engine with the sheet just in case there are any problems with the circlips. Then the circlips were removed, the new master link fitted. Again inspect the circlips carefully then rotate the engine a couple of times to check the timing. Whilst the engine's apart I'm also going to change the oiler tubes. These are metal tubes with plastic fittings which spray oil onto the camshaft. These parts can break over time, reducing the amount of oil getting onto the camshaft and causing wear. These need to be carefully prized off the top of the engine and then the plastic parts can be removed and refitted with the new ones. The parts are then refitted onto the top of the engine, making sure they're carefully pressed into place. Whilst the camshaft covers are off, they were also cleaned up. There are inserts in them which are screwed into place, so these were unscrewed all of the insides cleaned up and then reassembled. The covers can then be fitted using new gaskets and washers. We now just need to reverse the process of disassembling the engine bay to put everything back together. So refit the radiator, the fan and the shroud, distributor and distributor cap, power steering pump, spark plugs, spark leads. Then finally refit the air filter housing and air filter.